If you could do anything you wanted to do without anything holding you back, what would it be? Everyone has a purpose in life and others want to hear the purposeful value that is in you. Now, here is the host of the Value in You show, your guiding coach and mentor, Ellis Kirkpatrick. Hi, and welcome to today's show here on the Value in You on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. I am very excited to announce that I am now taking sponsorships. So if you get any value out of any of these shows, you want to see the show keep going on, get a hold of me at valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com. And let's have a little chat and talk about what's going on, what's in the future. Um, this week, finally, I've been telling you about it, and it's finally happened Goat the Reindeer Rides in an Airplane launched. It's just an ebook right now. Still working on the paperback. I'm going to put it on Amazon, but I'm actually going to have author copies on my website, lskirkpatrick.com, and you'll be able to get an author signed copy there where you find my other books too, like Riding Frogs in the Backyard and Henrietta the Hutto Hippo. Plus, I have my fourth books like this one right here. Everyone has a first day. And I have my 35-day journal. And, you know, I've had people ask me, why 35 days? And it's like, well, every month can be different. You know, 28, maybe 29 days in February, 30 days in one month, 31 in another month. And with a little extra days, there's some overlap. So if you order another book, it may not come in on time. But 35 days is a good time to get all of the stuff done that you want to get done, learning how the journal works, learning how to really build up your life and how to keep things going. Um, the journey is for building you up, for helping you grow, to encourage you to be uplifting to you. So a few extra days, it helps. There is a calendar in there. So you have, um, you know, something to put down for the whole month, keep track of everything. It's all in one place. You have your daily affirmations in there. Um, you have uh, seven or eight things that you can be grateful for in the morning and in the evening, which reminds me, I am working on my evening, morning and evening routine called the AM and PM routine. And when it's ready to go as a course, I'll be sure and let you know. But the journal is, is a great way to get your day started. Um, I know for me, having the journal to tell me what my day is going to be like to start the day off being grateful and thankful. And then as I get ready to close the evening and you don't have to close it at night, you know, my journal usually about 4.30, 5 o'clock when my work day's winding down, I usually still have a couple more meetings or so. I take that time to just kind of process the day. You know, there's a, a place in there that talks about what are two things that didn't work and why didn't they work? Because if something's not going right, we need to find out why it's not going right so we can fix it, change it, and adjust it for the next time. Um, it's just all part of growth, and it's a really great way just to wind down. Remember, when you go to bed at night, you put stuff in your journal. You're not getting rid of it. You're not losing it. It's there. It's taken out of your mind so you can have a peaceful, restful sleep. And then in the morning, if you need to pick it up, it's right there. Um, maybe the things that were bothering you or whatever you look at, it, it's like, you know, I've already got that figured out. So that's a great thing to happen. Um, but Goat the Reindeer rides in an airplane. Now, why would a reindeer be riding inside of an airplane? Reindeer are supposed to fly, right? Well, I'll tell you a little secret. Goat was practicing with his other reindeer buddies and he crashed into the barn and got hurt. So he can't fly to the festival with all the other reindeer like they can. He has to go inside of the airplane. And there are some scary things in there. But he learns how to think about them in ways that help him. So it's talking about perspective. He sees that maybe what he thought was scary isn't so scary after all. Um, and, and it's great for kids that have never flown before or maybe they have. Yeah, but they still a little bit unsure about it. Um, it tells them what to expect and what goes on. And Goat enjoys the time there. You know, at one point he talks about what everybody else on the plane is doing. And uh, 
um, this is kind of kind of a fun story. <laughs> I really had fun writing it. It was great working with the illustrator. I've worked with her before. She did the Henrietta book. And um, it's, you know, she got married this year. Congratulations, Kayla. And really happy for her. So that delayed the process a little bit. But that's a good, good delay. It's all good anyways. You know, it comes out when it's supposed to. Um, didn't plan it this way. Came out on my birthday. So that was a nice birthday present to have that launch and it became a bestseller so there's another one 20 times now <laughs> pretty excited about that um and and i think it, i'm saying this to you not to brag about what i'm i'm doing i want you to know what i'm doing so you can stay involved and and know that i'm always got something going on i'm working at it but i want to encourage you to keep going forward keep taking that next step it can be very difficult at times. Distractions can happen. Other influences from family or things outside of your, your little world, you know. And I say little because right around us is a small area when we encompass all of our friends and family. I mean, that's a big world to me. And and so as we're in this world, these distractions happen. And we get frustrated because I'm not meeting deadlines. I wanted to get this done. I wanted this to happen this way. And just take it all in and say, okay, so if this is not working, why isn't it working? You know, what can we do different? And and with my illustrator, it's like, I haven't heard from you. What's going on? And it's like, oh, no problem. That's great. Okay, so now I know it's going to take a little longer. But it's still great, great designs. I'm really thankful to her for for doing these and um it's a fun book goat the reindeer rides in an airplane now the next book and it's it's written is not about how goat got his name it's about him and his buddies in the barn and how they're supposed to clean up and what goes on with that and whether the farmer is happy with them or not and that one is like poetry it's it's a rhyming book um, I tried something different with that one. Uh, you know, usually I don't do the traditional rhyming books, um, but that one was fun. It was fun to do something different. We need to get out of our comfort zone once in a while, stretch ourselves, try something new, see what we're able to do. Speaking of doing something new, <laughs> my grandchild is here and we wrote a comic book together, graphic novel. I'm not quite sure which it is. But I am having some difficulty with it. It's only 27 pages. And because it's larger, it's full color, most places want more pages than what we have. So what do we do? We're talking about it, seeing what we can do, getting our heads together, finding out what the uh, guidelines are for most comic books, how it should be done and whatnot. So there's a new adventure going on that way. Um, oh, and the third book of Goat the Reindeer is How Goat Got His Name. Now, that one is still being processed. Um, I do have the, the outline for it and the things to be included, but it's not quite where I want it to be yet, so I'm not ready for that. Now, the other two books, um, well, should be three books, the two, the military and non-military of Not Another Business Trip, Going on a business trip, the child doesn't want to be left alone, alone, um, meaning that he wants the parent to stay with him instead of going to the sitters or going to the aunts or the uncles or wherever. And so they talk about it. They work through this, this time of separation. And it can be stressful um, for kids to be separated from a parent, especially for an unknown amount of time if they're in the military. Um, and so I have the military one, which will be uh, black and white, some coloring pages, some color, but that way you can put your, your own military colors on it. Um, and then we have the business person version of it, the non-military that will be all color. Uh, same story inside. Uh, fun, fun story. I, I really like where this one's going. I have, have just an adorable um, illustrator helping me with this one. And then Baxter's heart, ah, the heart of mine. I, I keep talking about it because I love this book already. Ah, Baxter is a lab 
that um, is a service dog, but Baxter passes away. And the other dog, Molly, is there. And the little boy that that is responsible for Molly begins to wonder what's going on. Why isn't Molly eating? Why is Molly wanting more attention from dad when Molly never wants attention from dad? I play with Molly all the time. Why doesn't Molly want to play with the toys? So it talks about not only the loss of the pet in your home, it talks about how the other animals are affected by the loss of that pet in the home. And it talks about what happened. Uh, I got the names turned around and Baxter's the dog that stays. <laughs> That's why it's called Baxter's Heart. And Molly is, it, is the service dog. And the boy wants to know what happened to Molly. And, and so we talk about different things. Does Molly, you know, is is Molly just gone? Does we talk about um, going behind the veil, and and it brings up what kids hear from their parents or grandparents or other people. What do you think happens to the animals? And so it kind of goes on through there, and um, the illustrations are just phenomenal. I mean, these are beautiful uh, watercolor type illustrations, so wonderful. Oh amazing amazing artist for this book but it's going to be the first of five books so we're, we've got Baxter's Heart that talks about Molly then uh Molly's or Baxter's owner the little boy that takes care of of Baxter has a friend Matt who has a, two parrots and one of them has passed away and sometimes parrots do really strange things like pluck out their feathers and and don't eat go hide in the corner of their cage um, when the parrot that they've been around is gone so we talk about that and some things they do um, and then we're going to talk about um, lizards and, and snakes because some people have those as pets we'll talk about a classroom pet um, you know the small mammals and then we talk about a cat and this cat is in charge of everybody on the farm. So this, this is interesting. And I will tell you that parts of each of these books do come from my personal life. So, so it comes from a place of my heart for yours. I see we're on our three minute break. I'd like to let you know we are open for sponsors. Um, I really appreciate inspiredchoicesnetwork.com for letting me be able to be a host on the Value News Show on their network. And we'll be right back after these messages. You've completed college or university or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay at home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? You know you were meant for more. Or were you? Yes. We each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show with your guiding coach and mentor, Alice Kirkpatrick. Ellis will help you find your purpose. Listen for The Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. 
You can also send an email to valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. Hi, and welcome back to the Value in You show. This week, we're talking a little bit about what I've got going on behind the scenes. You know, besides the podcast, I have another one, um, Wisdom on the Front Porch, which goes with the magazine when producing called Wisdom on the Front Porch. It's six times a year, already getting subscribers for it. Very excited about that. Going to launch in January. Um, that's a fabulous, fabulous columnist who are going to uh, contribute each time to the magazine um, have some really great surprises in it and and just really uh, excited about this one uh, I get excited about all of them I love what I do that's that's the best oh what else is going on um, I have coming up a one-day event I'm gonna see if I can pull up the the picture of it here um yes there we go via for those that will be watching it on uh, i'm sorry it's not working out very good we're watching tv tomorrow it's called via passion to purpose a transformational journey to discover and embrace your dreams very excited about this it's um on the 22nd of august it will be online on on uh i know we're going to be put it on zoom but i'm not sure if we're streaming it to facebook or not it's, it's just an hour long um really excited about that it'll be the first time i've ever done an event by myself um so <laughs> try not to say i'm a lot i'm hearing all these things my coach is talking to me about uh the other thing in waco on the 14th from 10 a.m to 5 p.m i am doing an in-person writer's workshop uh, the cost for that one, I believe, is $249 for the day. And you get my, oh, on this side, you get my book, Everyone Has a First Day. You get the journal, 35-day journal. And bring your manuscript because we really want to see what you're writing and where you're going with it. Find out what you want to do with it. And if you don't have a manuscript, that's okay. We're going to learn about writing and what it takes and where we're going and and all the the stuff that you normally don't hear about when writing a book there is a lot that goes on with it and it depends on the type of book that you're writing whether it's children's book um, toddler book older children learning to read uh, teen book teenager book young adult book, and so on and so forth and then you have all the different genres what they're for sci-fi fantasy crime whatever it is um so it's going to be a fun day. I'm really enjoying it. We've got a caterer that's going to be there. Um, we've had some people ask for vegan and uh, organic food. So we're going to do our best to uh, provide that for them. Um, really excited about it. So we've got those two things on the 14th of August in Waco, Texas. Um, and you can find that on Eventbrite. And then on the 22nd of August, Thursday at 5 30 pacific which would be 7 30 central 8 30 eastern um and <laughs> 6 30 mountain kind of didn't do those in orders um yeah just really excited about that we've got a special bonus you're going to be entered enter to win a free gift for those that show up on the call on the event um and we want to support you on you on your journey and seats are limited for both of those. We can only fit in about 15 people in Waco. And um, I only have, have uh, so uh, I forget my event planner, how many seats they said was for the uh, VIA virtual event. And the VIA is Value in You Academy is putting this on. So real excited about that. Um, all right, so where are we going? The magazine Wisdom on the Front Porch, you know, we chose that title because when most people, most Americans, I'll have to say, hear that, they think of the times that you're talking with family and friends on the front porch, maybe your musical family, and that's where you sit and play your musical instruments. Um, you know, as long as the weather is good, uh, the front porch is where you sit and talk. You I remember snapping peas and beans with my grandmother, you know, harvesting the vegetables, just 
or washing. She still had a, a ringer washer. And so um, we would, would, you know, fold the laundry there, but we would talk. And, and I loved listening to my aunts and my grandmother talk and, and hear about their lives and how they handle situations and, and what's going on and just the wisdom that would come from that. And so that's what we really want the book about is the wisdom that you learn through there. We've amazing people. Sifu Raphael is one of the columnists. Just just beautiful. This first issue coming up in January will have Nikki Ganjemi in it. Amazing article. Duchess DJ who travels and, and around the world. Um, just people who have, have a lot to share with you and they're successful at what they're doing and they're going on. Um, I believe I have seven or eight columnists now that are going to be there um, each month. And so if you would like to uh, go ahead and start subscribing to that, we can do that. We're taking subscribers, as I said, and you can get a hold of me at valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com and find out more about that. Find out more about um, what I've got going on with the books. Um, and and if you want to look at some of the courses, you know, that I'll talk about later, too, and I'll talk about it at the workshop in person, you can always go to www.writers, the number two, readers.com, writers to readers.com. Um, and uh, pretty excited about that. There's there's a lot going on. You've, you've heard Albert speak on here. He's one of the columnists and he's just on fire. <laughs> <laughs> he's so great to work with um let's see I, I don't know if if I don't know if I've ever talked about the other columnists but we will talk about them uh let them have an interview uh so you can see what you're really going to get uh the other thing I'm I'm starting to uh get the flyers ready for the sponsorship for the Carnegie Hall show um it's talking about energy and music and language and and we're going from Christian rock to rock and roll to con, uh, contemporary music to classical music. Just a big change in there. There's going to be a little country western in there <laughs> or country. I don't know what it's called now. And uh, um, very excited for that. Uh, looking at the end of May for that going on still haven't got the date set in stone yet we're talking with Carnegie about um what to do and and this is the first time I've ever put on a major event like that I used to do uh you know events for my piano students all the time but this is much bigger than that so I'm getting some great help and I I am just enjoying the process it can be a little hair pulling at times but but what isn't when you're learning something? It's all learning it new. And, and we need to just keep stepping forward whenever anything is a struggle. Um, don't quit. Don't say, oh, it's too much. I can't do it. Sometimes it does get to be a lot. And you need to maybe step back at that point. Um, don't stop everything you're doing, but stop long enough. I have to take a pause, as I've said before. Uh, this week, I've had to do that. I was talking with my, my mentor, and it's like I've got all these things going on. And, and he's like, you know, you're only supposed to have one or two things going on. And I said, yes, I know most of them have just kind of come at the same time. But I chose to, to do these. But I want to make them all work. I want to give 100% to each one. And I started getting frustrated and looking at what wasn't getting done. And taking my eye off of where I wanted things to go and looked at what didn't happen, where it should have been, what was this going on. And being a woman, I had a good cry about it. And then it's like, okay, cried it out. I'm ready to go <laughs> on, to, on to go forward. And um, great advice from my mentor to just keep going. Don't stop. You know, there's things you can do. Uh, I'm still trying to unpack from our move here and and with my grandchild here, you know, I've got more um, division of my time, and but it's all good. It's working out. I want to be a good example. And yes, sometimes grandma gets tired because I'm working so hard, but but that's okay. You know, I still just give me a few minutes just to to sip my ice water and and just recoup a little bit. I mean, 
it's interesting that something as simple, something as simple as taking a walk down the driveway, we have a long driveway, but taking a walk down the driveway to the mailbox and walking back to the house just really releases all of those things. Um, in my meditation this morning, it was talking about, um, uh, I want to say it's Encounter. Um, it's an app, you know, everything's an app, it seems to be. And yes, yeah, called Encounter. And it was just about taking time to breathe, open your hands so you can release the, the negative or whatever it is that's, that's keeping you bound up, keeping you frustrated or frazzled. And then just breathing in the air. And as a believer, I breathe in God's breath is the way I look at it. And then I breathe out all that is holding me back, that is, is choking my voice, that is keeping me from moving forward. And I do that two or three times. And just that simple act of breathing in and breathing out, no matter how you want to think about doing it, just relaxes you. And it only takes just a few minutes to do that. So, you know, on your lunch break, you know, if you've got just had a tough call, phone call with somebody, you just take two or three breaths and, and then it's like, okay, I'm releasing it. I'm going to go on and go to the next one. And that's one other thing I, I'd like to talk to you about. You know, I was just, just on the phone with our mortgage company and everything's okay. There's nothing wrong there. But I got to thinking about how many times they get a call or someone in a call center and they get yelled out by the customer and and how stressful that is because they're they're there they're there to help maybe they can't help the customer maybe the customer is so frustrated cuz it just isn't working right and so i consciously make it an effort to be kind in my words when i talk to them whoever it is even if i'm frustrated i mean sometimes when I'm working with my books, it's just, it's just like, I can't get this to work. What is going on? Why did it work all these other times? And this time it's not working. And you just need to give a little break, grace to them. By you staying calm while they're trying to help you with your problem, you make a lot more progress, get done a lot faster. And, and you get to be that breath of fresh air in their day. Um, I, I remember a friend of mine working at a call center and they were so upset because some people would just be furious at him, yelling at him. And it wasn't even anything that they did or could do. They just start in right away. But once they would calm down, then that my friend was able to calm down and they were able to find a solution. And the person was like, wow, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So try to have a little grace for the next time you call somebody for a bill or the electric company or whoever it is. And just remember, if you were on the other side of the phone, how would you want to be talked to? Well, I see we're ready for our next break. So let's go ahead and go to the break. Come back on the Value News Show with me, your host, L.S. Kirkpatrick, here on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And remember, if you're sponsoring this show, this is where you would get a great advertisement professionally done. And I would talk about who you are and what you do besides the commercial that's going to happen. So we'll be back right after this. You've completed college or university or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? you know you were meant for more, or were you? Yes, we each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show with your guiding coach and mentor, Alice Kirkpatrick. Ellis will help you find your purpose. Listen for The Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.
How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. Hi, and welcome back to the Value in You Show with your host, Ellis Kirkpatrick. And as I said, that would have been a great place to have your commercial on my show. Not because it's my show, but it's the show for the audience and for the people. And what a wide reach this this network has. Uh, we have the audio on Fridays and then the TV show on Saturdays, which gives you two huge, uh, I don't want to say the word reach again, but you've You've got two great avenues to go um, find new clients, new customers, let people know what's going on with you and uh, and enjoy, you know, just enjoy being able to get your information out in more ways than you already are. Uh, you know, I love working with other podcasters and stuff and sharing and being on each other's podcasts. It's, it's just amazing um, how we each work and we can help each other out. But, you know, no matter what you do, there may be a hundred other people doing it, but only you are going to do it your way. So join in. <laughs> oh, we have a question. Great. What are the first few things you do when you start to write a book? Well, that's actually the first thing you do is have an idea. It's like, I like that idea. I would like to write a book about that. Um, you know, and and there's no idea that's that's stupid or wrong. You know, it's your idea. It's great. Maybe somebody else has had an idea like that. It's okay because you're going to write it differently than they are. Um, so you have your idea, but what do you want to have happen with that? What do you, where do you want the idea to go? What kind of book do you want? And as I always tell everybody who's starting out, you have a chair, an empty chair in front of you. And you do this whether you're speaking, whether you're um, looking at your business, um, writing a book, Whatever it is that you're doing, if you look at one person in the chair, you know everything there is to know about that person in the chair, and that's who you're writing for. Your focus will go um, right where it needs to be. Your focus will be on getting everything that that person needs. And so when you're done, that book is going to be amazing. Um, other thing you want to do is when do you want it to be done by? Now, the reason you set a deadline is so you have something to work forward to. It's not to put pressure on you, though some people work much better under pressure than others, but it's to give you something to work for so you know what you need to do along the way. So um, I'll give you some, some tips about writing your book. You need to look for editors. You have to look for other people to read your book. Maybe um, I just found out a new acronym or Work. And it's for having readers who are going to read your book ahead of time and give you some pinpoints on it, whether they like this part or that part, or they don't like it, or they think the part you have at the end should maybe go up here. Or it's like, well, you've got this in here, but you didn't finish telling me. Like, say, you started talking about Aunt Jen and her, and her, her bobcat, you know, and then you go off on all these other things. Well, what have Dad Jen and the Bobcat over here? So it's great to have those readers that are there. They're not there to edit your book. They're not there to um, promote your book, although anybody can do that, which is great. The more people you let know about your book, the sooner 
um, or the better promotion it gets. Um, and, and people love to go along the journey. I've had so many people talk to me about how's your book going? What's the illustrations? What's happening with it now? And it just makes it enjoyable for them because then they're so caught up in the, the um, creation of your book with you that, you know, there, there's your cheerleading section or to boost you on. It's like, how come you don't have it done yet? And, you know, and what's happening? And, and that's okay. You know, life gets in the way. There are distractions, but you need those people to help you keep going too. Um, those are some fun things to do too. And um, you can always outline your book. What is it that you really want to talk about? Is it just a fiction book, fantasy, whatever your book is about? Or is it nonfiction? Is it business? Um, you can have an outline for the things that you want to talk about and then maybe outline those things, you know, and then outline one more time. And uh, that's a great way for you to write about. And then as you're, as you're doing your outline, you may say, oh, well, I really want to say this too. And so you put that in there. Um, and remember, you can, you can change your book along the way. You know, if you start off going one way and you want to make a change to go, you need to pause, say, why do I want this book to go this direction? And what am I going to do with it? Is the reader going to like it going in that other direction? Or are they going to say, what happened to the story you started with? This is not what you started with. Why did you do this? Um, another reason those arc readers are good. <laughs> Yes, yes, I can let you know those things. And then if if you do go another direction, you want to make sure you get your reader to that aha moment. Now I get it. Oh, this makes perfect sense now. And that can be a lot of fun to do too. Um, so yeah, it really depends on, on why you're writing the book. And then what do you want the reader to get out of the book? And I go over all of this stuff in in my courses and I go over it, um, be going over it at the workshop. I'm really pretty excited about that. Uh, sorry, my eyes are blinking. We got an uh, air conditioner in the room here. <laughs> this was the hottest room in the house and we finally set up the air conditioner this week and we've got the fan going and it's just kind of drying my eyes out a little bit today. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's just finding out why you're writing the book, what what it is, and and why you've chosen the the topic that you have, what, what you want the reader to get out of it, um, and and what you want to have happen with this. Is this something that that uh, say you're putting together a poetry book for a parent who's written these lovely poems? Are you just doing it for them as, as a thank you and as something special to give to them? Or are you putting it together for something, not only for them, but for the whole world to have so you have a different avenue? The other thing I'd like to tell you is something that I found out recently that really makes a big difference. And it's let people know right away when you're writing your book. Now, why would you do that? Because they get excited about it. And when people know you're writing your book, as things go along, they want to go on the journey, like I said just a little while ago. But by letting them know, that keeps you motivated to go. It's like, okay, I've told these people the book's going to have to get it out now. <laughs> um, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to write. Um, a wonderful lady talked with me this, this week. She got a hold of me and we were talking and she goes, I'm afraid that I'll do something wrong when it comes time to publish my book. And it's like, don't worry about that. You know, you 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 can't really go too wrong when you publish. In fact, that's when you find out a lot of things that maybe need to be corrected on it. Um, but uh, but don't be afraid of it. Keep Keep moving that step forward and write it out. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you have at first. It doesn't matter how many misspelled words or grammar isn't correct on it. Um, just keep writing it out and writing it out because all of that comes through the editing process. And um, if you get stuck, here's, here's a really good hint. If you get stuck while you're writing your manuscript and you can't figure out what to do, maybe you're stuck because there's something that happened in the story that isn't quite making sense to you. 
Now, you don't want to be editing your book while you're going through it. You know, you can read a chapter or something and say, okay, I need to fix that. But don't edit it through with grammar and, and this line and that line. Save that for later. But if you, you know, it's okay to go ahead and read what you've written because you might find out it's like, oh, that's why it's not making sense. I missed a step. I expected this person to be, you know, if you have people in your book, I expected the direction of this chapter to be going this way. And I totally missed a step or I started the next one without um, taking them through the journey to get to where they need to be. So that's okay. It's okay to do that. I know there's times where I've been writing and I just can't seem to write the next chapter. So I go back and I read the last few pages of what I wrote and it's like, that's what's wrong. I There's something that just was missing or wasn't quite right. And so you fix that, you take care of it, and then you're flowing to go on to the next one. Uh, sometimes you need to do research for, for yours. And when you're researching, that's great. I mean, you get a lot of great ideas then that, that really help enhance your story. Um, I had somebody who made a joke about, yeah, I go to Google to learn how to spell my words. <laughs> and they go, really, I don't. Um, but we, you know, we research a lot of things because we want to understand what we're writing too. You got to remember, this is the first time we've written this down, you know. Um, there's other ways to write too. If you have a business, this is a really great idea. If you have a business and you've been giving talks and you've been teaching and all of this, you probably have some recordings or notes and stuff from that. You can take all of those and put those in your book. Then you really have your book written. You can hire a ghostwriter to put it all together to have it make sense. Um, and ghostwriters are really great. At, you know, if you don't like the ghostwriter that you have, it's okay to stop and go get someone else. Now, you may say, oh, that took a long time or whatever, but you want someone who's going to be able to help you get your story across because it's your voice in there and you need to keep it your voice. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, sometimes on when I look for an illustrator for my children's books, I ask them to, this is what I'm thinking of. Can you do just one illustration for me? And then I know whether it's going to work out or not. If the illustration they have is not right, you know, I think you have like two or three times like the fiber that you can have uh, the illustration redone. Um, and that's okay. You know, see how, how it works. And if it's, oh, yeah, this is nice, but it's just not what I'm looking for. That's okay. You go on to another illustrator until you find the one that you really like. And when you do, it's, it's just amazing how it all works together. Um, same with ghostwriters, same with editors. If you don't like the editor, but what they're doing to your book, um, you know, and most of them will say, if you don't like this, let me know. Um, well, either I'm not hearing your voice or we need to find a different editor, which is okay. Um, I see we're ready to go on our next break. When we come back, I want to talk about something a little bit different and tell you one of the poems I have for the giving book that's coming out. So remember, this is a great time to be sponsoring right here. I would mention you and your business and promote you and you could have your, your commercial, professionally done commercial here on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And we'll be right back after these messages on the Value in You show with your host, L.S. Kirkpatrick. You've completed college or university or are working hard in your career. Perhaps you decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Perhaps you're wondering if who you really are got lost somewhere along the way. Asking, is this all there is? You know you were meant for more. Or were you? Yes. We each have a purpose in life, and that purpose can be fulfilled. It doesn't matter if you are 18 or 80. You matter in this world, and especially in your world. Tune in to The Value in You Show with your guiding coach and mentor, Alice Kirkpatrick. Alice will help you find your purpose. Listen for The Value in You Show with Alice Kirkpatrick each Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Value in You Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick. To participate in the program, 
Join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to valueinyoupodcast at gmail.com asking how to participate in the program. Now, back to the show. Hi, and welcome back to the Value New Show with Ellis Kirkpatrick here on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Wow, we've talked a lot. Uh, we've talked about a lot of different things on the show today. Um, so I hope I've answered most of your questions uh, about writing. <laughs> and here I am catching myself and <laughs> doing ums. <laughs> Uh, I go through and and uh, and afterwards I see the shows and I write down how many times did I say this? How many times did I do that? <laughs> Trying to improve myself every day. You need to improve yourself more. That's right. You know, you're wonderful exactly the way you are. You have great value in you because you are the only one who has, has made the choices that you have made. You are the only one who has had to live with the choices that others have made that have directly affected you and how you acted or reacted to them. All of that, that combined is where your value is, and that's where your worth comes from. Not this outside world stuff, but from inside of you. And that worth and that value is what makes you enough. And that is why you matter. I want you to know that because it's so important to know that your value is there. And don't let people take that value away from you or try to take it away from you. It's there whether they try to or not, because you are wonderful. This is also the reason you can have 100 people doing the same thing, and it's going to come out 100 different ways. Uh, I was was going through my my boxes as we packing, and I have um, a few of my parents and, and grandparents' things. And one thing that I got was this poem. Oh, bless this house this little paper it was in a little gold form uh frame and it says as heard on the prudential jack birch show now jack birch was um a singer and he had his own show on it says jack birch who often sings the beautiful words to bless this house on his morning nbc show has this to say about the man with tomorrow in his pocket. And I think that was a slogan or something that Prudential had um, going on. And Jack Birch was around 1955, 1945. He says, maybe you have never thought of it that way, friends, but there's a man who has your tomorrow in his pocket. That man is your Prudential representative. The tomorrow he offers you is a better, happier tomorrow for you and your family in a lot of ways. And so it goes on. Um, it says the future belongs to those who prepare for it. And that's true. But the song he used to sing was called Bless This House. Bless this house, O Lord, we pray. Make it safe by night and day. Bless these walls so firm and stout, keeping want and trouble out. Bless the roof and chimneys tall. Let thy peace lie over all. Bless this door that it may prove ever open to joy and love. Bless these windows shining bright, letting in God's heavenly light. Bless the hearth ablazing there with smoke ascending like a prayer. Bless the folk who dwell within, keep them pure and free from sin. Bless us all that we may be fit, O Lord, to dwell with thee. Bless us all that one day we may dwell, O Lord, with thee. And um, I have a picture of him, but I didn't really know that much about him. But he seems like he was quite a popular guy. And you can look it up on, on Google it <laughs> or, or wherever you want to, to look it up. And um, But I thought it was interesting that here he is on this network show and talking about, about God. And I thought, you know, this unless you're a church show, most people don't do that. Um, and it was great that it was backed by by company who at that time uh, was, well, this paper says 75 years of service. And it was in 1950. So um, Jack Birch must have been around quite a while. But that always sounded like something my, my mother would have. I wrote a poem, too. And, and um, I think I'll wait until next week to read it to you. Um, 
Yeah, I'll wait until next week to read it to you. We'll, we'll do it on the next show. And it was kind of thinking of the same way. It was like, well, what would I want to say to you? Because what if that's the only time I get a chance to say something to you? Do I want to just fill it with fluff? No. No, do I want to uplift you, to give you value into you more value added to you you know that's one thing you can do you can never give all of your value away because every time you give of yourself every time you give of your value you always get more back so you're never going to run out even if you hold it in you've still got value you just can't ever run out of it um so we're getting close to the end of the show i just really want to thank you for being here, for listening. Whenever you get a chance to listen to this, whenever you get a chance to watch this, I really want to say thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking time from your day to learn a little about writing, learn a little bit about me, learn about the books that I'm writing and what's going on. And hopefully you find things in here that that add value to your life, that help you keep going on, that encourage you to not give up. Um, some weeks I know can be really tough and it's frustrating. It seems like you're not making progress. But just remember those really tough times are usually the hardest, the very hardest, just before you get a breakthrough, just before something good happens. Or maybe you need to just take all of that that's really frustrating you and just open your hands and let it go. Breathe in and just release all of that that's holding you back and holding you down and say no more. I'm taking charge of this day and, and love what you do. Love yourself. You know, make sure you tell yourself that you love you. I actually put a a little post-it note on my bath note on my bathroom mirror saying, I love you. It also says, but God loves you more. <laughs> but uh, you know, for years I couldn't tell myself that. It just I was just so angry about everything that had happened, about choices that I had made that I really couldn't say it to myself. And it's like, whoa, that was an eye-opener when that happened. So maybe you might need to put a little stick it note on your mirror that says, I love you, but God loves you more. <laughs> Sometimes we need to have the strength of somebody else to stand on or to carry us through, you know, and, and it's great to have support. You know, look at who's around you. Where do you spend all your time? What is draining your energy? And, you know, with all this packing and unpacking stuff was just getting piled here and there. And that was draining my energy so much. Once you get it straightened out, you get it moved around a little bit. It's like, whoa, there's room. I can walk around in here. I don't have to look at that eyesore anymore. <laughs> so whatever you've got going on, I really wish you the best in everything that you're doing and in your life. And I thank you for being here on the Value in You show with me. I thank you for letting me be able to share my wisdom with you. And remember, we've got Goat the Reindeer. <laughs> We're going to change the, change the topic here just a little bit. We've got Goat the Reindeer. This has just been launched. It's on Amazon right now. Um, is an ebook. We'll get the paper back up later. Um, enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. Just Remember to breathe and release all of that that's weighing you down, that's holding you down, that's that's causing you to be frazzled. And just say, that's it. I'm going to choose to be happy. I'm going to choose to not be frazzled. And even though sometimes we make that choice, things still come up. That's okay. That's okay because it's not going to last forever. And, you know, it will get better. It will get better in one way or another. It may be tough for now, but you're going to make it through and and find people to support you to work through things 
it's always great when you've got somebody you can talk to who knows what you're going through or you know what they're going through so thank you for being here and we'll thank see you for listening to the value in you value show. show ellis returns fridays at 2 p.m eastern 1 p.m central 12 p.m mountain and 11 a.m pacific on inspiredchoicesnetwork.com until then remember that you have great value you are worthy and you are enough you matter <laughs>